Good evening folks, Colin here from Commerce Gurus. Just uh, going to bring you through a brand new install of our brand spanking new theme Boulder, uh, which you can get today on themeforest.net. Um, so if you've arrived at this video, you've probably opened up our uh, main uh, theme documentation and are looking to get Boulder up and running. So this video is going to take probably about 10 minutes um, if you're if you've used WordPress before and are familiar with installing themes and plugins and stuff like that, it shouldn't take you much more than about 10 minutes to get everything set up and running. Um, for the purposes of this initial installation video, I'm going to make the assumption that you've gone ahead and installed a clean new version of WordPress. Um, so nothing installed, no existing shop, nothing like that, no WooCommerce, no nothing. So we're, we're sitting here as we type uh, middle of April 2015, and uh, I think we're on WordPress 4.4.1, something like that, 4.4.1, uh, yeah. So that's our current uh, most recent version as we stand. Um, yeah, so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you through the whole process really now. So let me just jump over to uh, our WordPress dashboard. So for anyone who's um, not familiar with uh, buying themes on ThemeForest, there's a couple of gotchas that uh, I'm going to point out as we go through this process, which uh, will hopefully make your life a little bit easier in terms of getting installed and up and running. So the first thing you want to going to do is go into Appearance and Themes. As you'll see here at the moment, I just have the, the main default WordPress themes on uh, the sections. I've got Add New, then I hit Upload Theme. So first gotcha. Um, when you download the main theme package from ThemeForest, which will be called boulder underscore package .zip. Inside there, you're gonna find a number of folders. So for example, the one that we're most interested in right now is called theme install. There's also a child theme folder, licensing, documentation, demo data. Uh, the most important one right now is this theme install folder. That's where you'll find the actual theme, which is called boulder.zip. So, <coughs> excuse me, a common mistake that a lot of people make is they'll try and upload the main zip package, which uh, you'll start to get messages like uh, style sheet is missing, or are you sure you want to do this? Or you might get a connection timeout because the thing is so bloody big. So <coughs> really want to avoid, apologies for my cough, really want to avoid uploading the wrong zip file is the first point. So I just selected that file and hit installation and file is now uploaded. So again, it's about 10 megs. So you know, if you do get an error message, even if after selecting the right zip file, it's more than likely because your uh, host has a file upload restriction place. You're gonna to wanna to talk to them, and get them to increase it. I'm just gonna take a quick sip of water because I have a little bit of a cough. I'm just gonna hit activate. So now you can see I've activated Boulder and theme is now active but we're not anywhere near finished the setup process just yet. You'll see immediately that there's a prompt up here where a theme is prompting us to install a number of plugins which are quite important for the team to operate correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and click begin installing plugins. <clears throat> so I'll immediately see the screen here. Now if you want, you can go ahead and you can start clicking install on each one of these. But if you just click this guy here, you'll see that immediately everything's pre-ticked and I click install and I hit apply. And again, if you're on a slightly slower host, this might take some time. If you're on a faster host, it should only take about 10 seconds. And just while we're waiting for that to complete, you'll see some of these are marked as required, some are recommended. In all honesty, you're as well just install them all in one go at this point, then you'll never have to worry about installing other plugins in the future if you're missing something or whatever the case may be. Okay, so you can see now everything's installed. I'll scroll down, I hit back to the required plugins installer. And I'm gonna do the same thing again. This time I'm gonna click activate. So all I'm doing here is installing all the required plugins and activating at the same time. So there's a two step process there to install and activate all your plugins. So now I can go back to the dashboard. What you'll see happening here is you'll see, for example, see where Welcome to Redux 3.5 has popped up here. Some plugins, after you install them, have these little initialization screens. Uh, WooCommerce does this as well. 
So don't be surprised if you see a screen like this just after uh, leaving the activation dashboard. Okay, so right now, what have we done? Just to recap, we've uploaded boulder.zip, we've activated the theme, we've then gone into the, um, and installed and activated the required and recommended plugins for Boulder. So to be honest with you, if you've gotten this far, that's where a lot of problems can happen. So, so far so good. So our next step. Um, right now, for example, if I was to just bring you to the front end, what you'll see is the theme is now active and the hello world, the default WordPress hello world blog post is here and things are pretty underwhelming. So time to populate our test site with some interesting content. So go back into WordPress and if I go to appearance and then go to import demo data, <clears throat> you'll see now that we have, oh, by the way, before I start this, um, very, very important is this guy here. Do not click this guy because when we import our demo data, we're going to import and install WooCommerce pages. So you do not need to do this. Quite often people will do this and then they get two sets of WooCommerce pages and sometimes you get shop hyphen two um, or you get my uh, account two. That's generally because you'll have clicked this. Um, now, there is a workaround which I'll cover in another video if you've clicked this, if it's too late. But for now, I'm just going to click Skip Setup. Again, you get one of these welcome screens. And let's just go back into Import Demo Data. So, now, when I click this guy, <coughs> it's going to populate my brand new WordPress installation with a lot of content, posts, blog posts, pages, products, widgets, menus, you name it. Um, it can take a little bit of time for this import to run on our server, which is a, a VPS server. It takes about 40 seconds to complete. I have seen this take two, three minutes on some web servers. GoDaddy in particular, um, who can be, let's, let's keep this political and clean. That's a family show after all. Uh, they can be difficult and challenging to work with. I uh, can think of lots more uh, colorful ways of describing our, our experience with GoDaddy. Um, needless to say, if you are a, unfortunate enough to be a GoDaddy customer, um, I recommend that you increase your max execution time out um, to about five minutes um, or 300 seconds. It's very important. Otherwise, this import process will more than likely fail. Um, but if I just click import demo data just to kick things off there, um, you'll see this is gonna take um, around 50 seconds. If it takes any longer, I'll pause this video and come back to it. <coughs> Excuse me for the cough. Um, okay, so one of the things that I guess uh, it's important to note as well is that the demo data that we provide does not 100% match uh, the demo data that you'll see on our main theme demonstration. So what have we, ch what have we removed? We've removed any images that we do not have copyright for. Um, we've also taken out a few widgets that don't travel well in terms of providing you with demo data, for example, a Twitter widget. Um, and there are a number of other small subtle tweaks that we um, have applied to ensure that the demo data uh, installation process is as quick as possible. With some WordPress themes, you might find that their demo data uh, can take oh, anywhere up to 10 minutes to load, which is, which is crazy, crazy long. So we've tried to keep things lean uh, and simple and straightforward. Um, and uh, you can see now actually that the import process is complete. So when it's complete, you'll notice very little on the screen changes, except for this all important information, all done, have fun, have fun have fun, have fun. If you do, don't see that text or if the screen is sitting in an infinitely timing out perspective, something has gone wrong with your import. It really shouldn't take any more than maximum three to four, five minutes tops. Any longer than that, something's gone wrong or you're on a really, really bad server. Um, so now that we've completed that, we're nearly there folks uh, in terms of the initial in, in, uh, install and setup. Uh, one thing you want to do straight away is set up your homepage. 
So I'm just going to open a few other links here in the background. So by default, WordPress will display our latest posts. We want to go ahead and select display our default homepage. And we'll set our blog up at the same time. So once that's complete, uh, if I just go back to our underwhelming initial demo, you'll see now things are slowly starting to take shape. So where do we go from here? So now you'll start to see that we're populating some content and this is what I talk about in terms of images, which generally provide placeholders. Okay. Ah, yes, here we go. So there's a good example of what happened there. I clicked cart, I didn't go there. And that's now because we need to assign our pages to be WooCommerce pages. So where do we do that from? Go back into WordPress, into settings. And we are going to go to products display and we'll select our shop page so this is why we don't import the WooCommerce pages from earlier we already have a shop page in our demo data it's assigned a template that we want to give it rather than the default template which WooCommerce would assign the pages to if we were to let, if we were to let WooCommerce to install it we'll assign our car and our checkout pages as well Really annoying that these are all in different parts of WooCommerce. They used to actually be on the same page many, many moons ago. And we just go back and we also sign our My Kent. Okay, so now if I go back to my product, my cart should work. Yes, it does. Full width page. And I check it should also work. Very good. Okay. So what else do we need to do? So the other thing we're going to want to do is theme options. Let's just quickly show you what we have in theme options. So a lot of common things. And no, we don't really extract track us. Um, so you'll see there's quite a lot of theme options um, in the theme. Let's you do lots of weird wonderful things in terms of typography, in terms of colors. You're going to want to upload your logo here. You can switch things on and off in the footer, including your footer text. Um, quite a lot of things in WooCommerce that you can do, including which logos appear, which payment options you choose, the, the sorting criteria of them. Um, one that I like to use quite a lot for individual requests is this custom code panel. So this takes custom CSS which can be quite handy if you don't want to go to the full extent of creating a child theme. You can do that quite easily. Um, and honestly, there's quite a lot of little things in here you, you, you may wish to tweak for your own site. So happy experimenting. Um, that's it for this video, folks. I'm going to be back with another video in a few moments, which will just take you through the very uh, last step in our installation process, which is to set up our homepage slider. Alright folks, talk to you soon.